This is Tutorial 3, Case 1. In the first step, you are to open a file called Chemistry. You'll find that in the Excel 3, Case 1 folder. And then you're to save it as Chemistry 303 Final Scores. So you'll choose File, Save As. And then type in the new name. And click Save. You're asked to enter your name and the current date in the documentation sheet. And then we'll move to step three, where we'll look at the first semester score sheet. In step three, we're asked to write a formula that will calculate a weighted average. So what we want to do is use these weights in column C for these scores in row 17. So here's how you would do that. Equal and then we'll pick the first exam, or B17. We want to multiply that times exam 1's weight, or the 20% in C8. Now I know I'm going to copy this formula down, so I'm going to go ahead and press the F4 function key and make my reference to C8 absolute. Then I'll add to that with the plus sign, exam 2 times its weight of 20%, Again, making that reference to C9 absolute, and adding to that exam 3 score times its weight, 20%, making that 20% absolute, plus the final exam score times the 40% weight for final exam, making that absolute. And then when I press Enter, I see that the overall weighted average for this student is 81.2%. Now just for fun, I'll calculate just a regular average. And notice the difference, that this student would have a, a higher overall average, but they didn't do as well on the final exam, and since that's weighted at 40%, that brings the overall weighted average down. I'll delete this cell, and then we're going to use the fill handle to fill this formula down. So all you have to do is put your cursor in the corner and watch for that change of shape, that's very important, that plus sign, and then you just double click, and it copies that formula down. If you look in the next row, you'll notice that your references in your formula bar all change to row 18. Of course, my references that were absolute, the ones with the dollar signs, did not change, which is exactly what I wanted. In step 5, we're going to place a formula in cell B5 to calculate the count or how many students we have. So the way we'll do that is equal count, and we actually have to use count A to count all. This will count all of the cells that are not empty. We open our parentheses, and then we'll highlight all of the student ID numbers. and press Enter, and you can see that there are 36 students in the class, and if you look at the formula bar, you can see how that formula is put together. In cell D8, we want to count, calculate the median score for exam 1. So the way we'll do that is we'll say equal median and then we'll highlight exam 1 scores and press enter and the median score for exam 1 was 84.5 percent unfortunately this won't work for me to copy it down because it will reflect a different row rather than a different column so let's move along and calculate the maximum this would be equal max of exam 1's scores which is the highest score or a hundred percent equal min or the lowest scores of exam 1 scores and that turns out to be 52, and then the range is the difference between the two scores. What's the difference between 100 and 52? 
So we'll just calculate that. Equal E8 minus F8, and that turns out to be 48 points difference, or the range for the exam one score. I'll pause the video while I finish these formulas. I've almost finished completing the class summary, but I want to go over a way that you might do it that would be a little more efficient. So for our overall column, which is column F, I need to calculate the median, and I've been continually having to highlight these columns. So let me show you a trick. I'm going to highlight the overall column before I even begin my formula. And in my name box, I'm going to name it overall. Now, when I write my formula, equal median, instead of having to scroll in column F, I can just put overall. And you can see that the computer is trying to prompt me, letting me know that I have a range name. And I can do the same thing here with equal max overall. And once it begins to prompt me, I can just press the tab key to accept it. Equal min overall. And then the range can simply be dragged down. So we'll just double click the fill handle. And I do want to bring it down one more. And so check your work and make sure that you have the following uh, numbers in your class summary. Now I, I lost my formatting here when I copied that down. So what I can do is click this Fill Options and say Fill without formatting on that one cell. Let me click away so you can see that it maintains its green fill. In Step 11, we're asked to use conditional formatting to highlight the top 10 scores in column F with a light red fill and a dark red text. Here's how you would do that. First, you'll want to highlight the scores. Well, since I have that range name, I can go up to my name box, click the down arrow, click overall, and that's now highlighted for me. Now I've had my ribbon turned off or tucked away just to save room on the screen. And so I'm going to go to the Home tab, which will open my ribbon, and then I'm going to select Conditional Format. When I click Conditional Formatting, I want to go to the Highlight Cell Rules moving on down to the top and bottom rules. I want the top 10 items. The default is to color code the top 10 items with a light red fill and a dark red text, and that's exactly what I want. And so if I click away, you can see, I'll scroll up a bit so you can see the headings, that the top 10 numbers are highlighted for me. They want me to put in a page break at A14. So let's scroll up to A14. What I do is just click on the row number, and then I'll go to Page Layout and Breaks and insert a page break. Now when I click away, you'll be able to see a line running across there, letting you know that that's going to end up on one page. And they ask us to repeat the first three rows of the worksheet. So they want this information at the top corner to be on the second sheet. We'll find that feature under Page Layout. Under Page Layout, we can choose the More button and click the Sheet tab. And what we want to do is repeat rows at the top. The rows we want are rows 1 through 3. So we'll highlight those. Notice how it completed that for us. And then if I do a Print Preview, you'll see that on page 1, we have just the top portion. But if I go over to page two, we have all of our scores, including those top three rows which have been printed.